welcome to a half hour of adoration. Half an hour in the tradition of being in the presence of God. So wherever you are, I ask you to please sit comfortably in a way that you won't fall asleep, but that you can be attentive. Switch off your cell phones or any distraction that you might anticipate. And let's spend this half an hour with God. I'm going to lead you throughout this whole half hour. And the theme of this adoration today is letting go or giving to God or letting go and giving to God. In other words, if you have any distraction during this half an hour, that'll be perfect. Because so often in our adoration, we feel that we are being disturbed by distractions, thoughts that we think we shouldn't be having. I would like to challenge each one of you this evening that whatever thought you have, let it be the voice of God saying, I want to talk to you about this particular thing right now. And rather than spend time judging ourselves and saying that we're not praying properly because we are being distracted, rather to use that distraction as part of our genuine prayer to God. After all, every thought we have, God knows about. Whether it's a good thought or a bad thought, we decide what we are going to do with that thought. And if we decide whether it's a good or bad thought, if we get into the practice of bringing it to God, as we are going to attempt to do right now, it's a way of training our souls, our spirits, our brains, not to judge ourselves, but to bring everything to God. And together with God, we sit in, in anticipation of his direction with our distraction. He says we should not judge Yet so often we do judge, and we judge ourselves. And that makes us depressed. It makes us stressful. It fills us with anxiety and fear. But it is my hope and prayer that during this half an hour, we will be able to Allow God to gently show us just how lovable we are. Yes, with our weaknesses and with our sins. After all, that's the reason Jesus came to earth. Because we needed him so much. We needed him to forgive us. We needed him to show us a new way. So to be sinful, to be weak, to have distractions is all God needs from us for him to bless us. So let's not run away from our dark sides, but rather let us bring light into that darkness.
opening our hearts to whatever is distracting us, hurting us, making us fearful, anxious, not by way of knowing what to do and filling our heads with solutions, no. Whatever solution we might dream of, it's only temporary. It can only be temporary. But what sustains is when we have darkness, we are allowing the light in. So let us calm down, and one of the best ways to calm down is to breathe deeply. And I will lead you. I'm just going to breathe deeply. And we'll breathe a breath for the Father and for the Son, and then one for the Holy Spirit, to remind us of the totality of God in our midst. The Father is the Creator, the Son is the Redeemer, the Holy Spirit is the miracle worker in our daily lives. So as we remember the Father, we remember everything we know and see has been given to us by God the Father. And we breathe in and hold it, hold it, and breathe out. And push it out. Push out every little bit of breath in your lung. And then relax. Just relax. This is how we calm ourselves down. This is how we bring ourselves into the presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. So our next breath will be to remember this incredible person, Jesus the physical form of God Almighty who came for you and I. And we breathe in. Hold our breath and breathe out. And squeeze your lungs. Ready, squeeze it. Yes, yes, yes. And relax. Oh, yeah. Sometimes our breathing is too shallow and the old air doesn't get a chance to get out and new air doesn't get a chance to fill us and that's why deep breathing is so important for us. Now we breathe in remembering the Holy Spirit, the miracles the miracle of life, the power of God in each one of us. And we breathe in. And you hold it. Yes, just hold it. And then breathe out. Oh, yes. Just push it out. Oh, 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 oh. Feel as if you're being punched in the stomach. Out, out, out. And relax. There we go. Now just breathe normally, don't take too much attention, other than to know that you're breathing in and breathing out. I like to have a sacred word when I breathe in. Tonight my sacred word is peace. My sacred word with breathing out is forgiveness. So as I'm breathing, I'm gently, without any stress, whenever I breathe in and I think about it, I think of peace. I say peace and forgiveness. Because at the moment, I'm having trouble forgiving myself about some silly little thing. It'll be like that for everybody. So choose your word for your in-breath and your out-breath. It shouldn't be like mine because I'm only one person. But you might have a different word. You might have blessing. 
and joy in your out breath. Whatever it is, choose your word right now as you look at the Eucharist, the presence of God in our midst. Let us just calm down and keep this divine time between us and God. What are the things that have disturbed us this day? What are the things that have brought us anxiety, shame? One by one, think of them. Don't see them as a distraction, but bring them to God. And in a sense, place them on the altar, somewhere on the altar that you can see. Is there some personal struggle that we are going through? Maybe an old struggle, maybe a new struggle. Let's label it in our minds and just present it to God with no judgment. Just give it to God. Let us unload our minds and our hearts with this burden. That's what Jesus Christ came, to carry our burdens with us. Whatever feelings, whatever anxieties you have, for the next five minutes, slowly just place them, give them to God. No judgment, no thinking why, just giving.
And now that we've given some time to place our feelings before God, let us now look at our relationships with others. In this day, or maybe yesterday, what are the things that come to mind when we think of the people that we relate to? How have we related to them? How have they brought us into a sense of happiness or have disturbed us? And without judging them, without judging ourselves, bring those people in your mind and carry them like a child in your mind and place them on the altar. Maybe you have a child at home that you have been praying for for years about something and you are disturbed and distracted. Today, don't be disturbed and distracted. Just bring that child as if it was a newly born child and place it, offer it to God. No judgment, no harsh words, just placing before God. Let us go through our lives and do that with anybody that has given us joy or pain. Each one has been a blessing. Let's do that now for the next five minutes.
And now for the next five minutes, let us meditate on our relationship with the God of our understanding. You know, we all have so many different images of God and we relate to God in so many different ways. And all of them are beautiful, wonderful ways, but so often we are anxious. Am I doing enough? Am I praying hard enough? And we forget that love is about just being in the presence of the one that loves us. And being in the presence of the one that we are being loved by is all the one who's loving us wants. They want our presence. Adoration helps us to understand that. So let us think for the next five minutes of our relationship with the God of our understanding, what does he or she or God look like? What are the things that we see in God's heart? What name is God calling us? Sometimes it's a different name at different times. What name do we call God? All these thoughts about God who is God for us? Who is this God? We've had so many explanations over our lives, so many examples, but as an individual, how do I see God? What is my mental, spiritual picture of God? So bring all those images, all those ideas without judgment, without any kind of anxiety or fear and just present them to God as a reminder to us and an acknowledgement of the beauty of what he has taught us so far in our lives. What is our image of God? What do we think of God? For the next five minutes, let's bring that presence without judgment before God.
we remember the intention of this adoration is to let go and let God, to give to God whatever it is that needs to be given to him and to leave it with God. And as we come out of this adoration, let us know that all the things that we have placed on this altar, all our feelings, all our relationships, all our understanding of God, they are within us all the time. We don't have to go grabbing them back. Let us just leave them on the altar of God, knowing that we have allowed God into our lives, into maybe a dark place, an unknown place, a mysterious place in our heart. We don't have to have the answers. We don't have to judge ourselves. But we've just allowed him in. This has been half an hour of allowing God to do what God does. To do what the beloved can do and no one else. We are not called to have all the answers and all the solutions and to be everything for everybody. No. That's God's job. And he's the only one that can be everything for everybody. I can't. You can't. I'm called to respond in my little way, to the collective way. If I don't have solutions and answers and I'm not successful in my eyes or other people's eyes, that doesn't mean to say I'm a failure. It just means that I am a child of God, limited and loved. held and caressed by none other than God. And my understanding of God and your understanding of God will and must be different because we've each got to be held in a different way. No mother holds her children in the same way. We rest in God. We allow ourselves to trust and to be loved. No judgment, no fear, no anxiety, just presence. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen.